We have, in the past, covered numerous, seemingly impossible ancient feats of ancient engineering found throughout modern-day Japan. Polygonal stonework of gigantic proportions, ancient forts and temples, which we have previously distinguished, were constructed upon far older and now inexplicably mysterious masonry techniques, the most abundant of which we have come to know as polygonal. Yet, alas, due to the explanation as to how this was achieved remains elusive, thus the site is dismissed and deliberately overlooked. As such, the absence of any logical explanation as to how said sites came into being, or even how this stonework was once achieved, means that not only are these sites suppressed from mainstream attention, but the seemingly impossible features still in existence are instead of being exposed and admitted as unexplainable accomplishments, thus allowing those with a critical capacity to pursue said origins, we feel, are instead avoided, compelling proofs of our posit of their having once been advanced, now yet lost civilizations, which once flourished and often seemingly suddenly vanished, have indeed been and gone on our planet. The suppression of this truth gives motive to academia, who attempt to cover up such realities. Yet, regardless of the defining purpose for this conspiracy, whether to avoid mass panic or not, we feel, it is not a valid enough excuse for this suppression, and in our opinion, we feel, regardless of public reaction, we all deserve to be presented with the true reality of these ancient sites, and indeed, a true account of our history. Tucked away within rural Japan is a megalith known as Ichi no Hoden. At first glance, this particular megalith looks as though it is floating in mid-air. The reason for this is due to the civilization's abrupt departure. As such, the stone has not been completely liberated from the bedrock it is still attached to. Clearly, at the final stage of excavation, the stone is literally hanging by a thread. And due to the location of the excavation, and the fact that the stone itself has protected its base from erosion, the megalith has remained attached to this small seam of rock for untold millennia. The defining reason for why we attribute the stone to a now lost civilization is its sheer size, measuring an impressive 5.7 by 6.4 by 7.2 meters. The stone also weighs an estimated 500 tons, meaning that the techniques, or indeed the technology used to cut and transport the stone, remains an unexplainable feat of ancient engineering. Largely dismissed by academics the world over, these gigantic stones, however, are a legacy that due to their immense size, is likely to still be present here on our planet, far after our own civilization has been and gone. Additionally, just like the many other sites which we have successfully identified within Japan, as the work of a now lost civilization, a temple was later built at the site, and although attributed to a civilization within permitted timelines, the megalith has been believed to be holy and has been venerated since ancient times. According to mainstream study, which although not publicized, were literally forced upon academic institutions as they continue to attempt to appear transparent all the while actively avoiding the task of explaining not only who and when this stone was cut by, but how this ancient civilization was intended to transport said stones to their final locations. The official version is, predictably, a claim that the rock was intended to be a tomb. However, just as we would have expected, there is no scientific information as to who quarried the stone, or indeed what intentions they had for its eventual purpose. Who cut the Ishinohoden megalith? How did ancient civilizations move such gigantic stones, sometimes thousands of miles? We find the Ichinohoden megalith highly compelling. Continuing on from our previous video where Don discusses the amazing and incredibly intricate artistic wonder that is the Kailash Temple, we felt it a good time to cover another incredible ancient wonder, and indeed set of rock-cut temples known as Madan Saleh. Predictably, a little shared enigmatic site, it is located within modern-day Saudi Arabia. 
Purportedly dating from the Nabataean Kingdom, 1st century AD, it is the southernmost settlement after the better known, yet no less impressive Petra, made famous by the Indiana Jones epics. In 2008, UNESCO proclaimed Madan Saleh a site of patrimony, becoming Saudi Arabia's first World Heritage Site. 131 rock-cut monumental structures said to have been built as tombs. However, as they were cut with such precision, their existence is clearly a mysterious one. Very little is known regarding the ancient builders of these sites. The little we do know was left on several mysterious and invaluable plaques, which adorn a select few of these rock-cut structures. Although the insides of the tombs appear to have been rather crudely finished, the outer exteriors are clearly phenomenally refined. For a civilization even a mere 2,000 years ago to have managed to create such precise structures remains a tough thing for mainstream archaeology to explain. Just like the many other sites, Pumapunka, Giza, etc., etc., they display a far superior level of ability to that of which we are led to believe. And as always, mystery history presumes it is not the historic record which is incorrect, but rather the antiquity of these structures which is actually being hidden, their true age concealed and attributed to a post-cataclysmic civilization rather than their true creator. The Nabataeans, the academically claimed builders, were quite advanced for their chronological position within history regardless, supposedly having a strongly democratic society sharing wealth and land equally amongst the tribe. They also displayed an incredibly complex understanding of hydraulic systems. The name Mada and Saleh, or the city of Salih, is also interestingly associated with a very ancient prophet, which is also connected to an ancient tribe known as the tribe of Talmud. Saleh is also the equivalent to a very ancient figure mentioned within the Hebrew Bible. The tribe of Talmud, said to be the descendants of the biblical Noah, However, the Tamid were also said to have become very corrupt, materialistic, and stopped believing in God. According to the accounts, this is when God sent Prophet Salih to warn them that if they would continue in that way, they would be destroyed, a prophecy which eventually came true. To this day, the remains of the ancient sites are considered by some to be cursed. What do you think regarding the rock-cut tombs of Mada and Saleh? Remnants left by a culture some 2,000 years ago with the use of copper and stone tools? Or structures left by a far more advanced, far more capable ancient people, whose entire existence is attributed to others, subsequently concealing it here upon our planet? Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. We recently covered the astonishing rock cut structures known as Madain Sala. Located within modern-day Saudi Arabia, they are largely attested by most modern-day academia as being rock-cut tombs made by a civilization 2,000 years ago. However, the precision involved in the cutting of such a remarkable collection of buildings will not have escaped the astute-minded among us. Just how did these civilizations, two or even 3,000 years ago, manage to create such awe-inspiring structures? with the tools available at that time within known history. Just as the pyramids in Giza are attributed to the Egyptians, it is highly possible these claims of ownership were but mere inhabitations of sites far older. Many people who have investigated these rock-cut tombs have come away with a conclusion that some of the architecture is so precisely cut, to recreate such straight angles would require the use of laser technology. A presumption also shared by us. It is therefore delightful when one stumbles upon something such as Al Nasla. Located within Tamiya Oasis, also within Saudi Arabia, was this utterly perplexing stone left as a lasting signature of the tool used to create Madain Saya? Discovered by Charles Hoover in 1883, was this amazing megalith cut in twine with a laser? or indeed some form of highly advanced, highly ancient precision equipment of some form? If not, what could have created such a miraculous split so finely made and so straight within such an enormous rock? A perfect line straight through the center left perfectly balanced upon two separate bases for untold millennia. Interestingly, in 2010, 
The SCTH, or Saudi Commission for Tourism and National Heritage, announced the discovery of a rock near Tama, with a hieroglyphic inscription of Pharaoh Ramses III upon it. Researchers have therefore hypothesized that Tama was a part of an important land route between the Red Sea coast of the Arabian Peninsula and the Nile Valley. Was al nasla along with Madai Sawya, constructed by the same individuals as the Great Pyramids of Giza? Furthermore, archaeologists have discovered cuneiform inscriptions, possibly dating from the 6th century BC, pertaining to a legendary ancient civilization known as Oasis City. Mentioned within the Old Testament, it was said to have been a highly developed civilization with complex buildings and an advanced knowledge of waterworks. The oldest mention of Oasis City appears as Tiamat in Assyrian inscriptions, dating as far back as the 8th century BC. Were these mysterious people the culprits? With such precisely made rock-cut structures found within the same landscape, structures that many have reluctantly concluded display evidence of advanced stone-cutting technology, we find the existence of al nasla highly compelling. On a number of occasions, we have covered the unexplainable remnants left by a civilization which once undoubtedly flourished here upon this planet. A true mysterious history. The most notable and presumably the evidence which will remain upon our Earth for the longest being the unimaginably enormous megalithic structures which rest in many areas of Earth. These structures built using stones so large, we cannot explain how they were moved. The quarry, known as Yang Shan, is such an impressive example of this lost knowledge and or technique for moving these stones, we felt it deserved an in-depth discussion. What is special about Yang Shan is the fact that it was seemingly abandoned, quite possibly due to cataclysm. In the midst of actually cutting some of the largest stone megaliths ever found on Earth, revealing in all its glory just how these stones were indeed detached from the Earth's bedrock, a question which had also remained unanswered for many years. Yang Shan also reveals invaluable clues to how they could have been moved. The star of the show, an enormous steel weighing 16,250 metric tons, disputed to have been cut during the reign of the Yongle Emperor, the third ruler of the Ming Dynasty in China reigning from 1402 to 1424. However, although academia is seemingly willing to approach such subjects with an air of arrogance, often due to its in-depth accurate understanding of said era, it inevitably becomes unstuck once one begins to explore their knowledge or indeed explanation of how these enormous stones were intended to be moved. Academia's illogical explanation of the site is as follows. In 1405, the Yongle Emperor ordered the cutting of a giant statue in this quarry, for use in the Ming Xiaoling Mausoleum in dedication of his deceased father. Three separate pieces were being cut – the rectangular base, the body, and the head. After most of the stone cutting work had been done, the architects conveniently realized that moving stones from the quarry to Ming Xiaoling and installing them there would not be physically possible. The body weighed 8,799 tons, and the steel's apparent head weighed 6,118 tons. According to quote, experts, it would have stood 73 meters tall. A supposed legend attached to this possible fallacy has it that workers who failed to produce the daily quota of crushed rock of at least 33 shang would be executed on the spot. But is this the real story of Yang Shan Quarry? Or could there possibly be a more interesting history attached to this site, and indeed its accompanying stones? Within Baalbek, one of the countless examples found around the world, there are stones well over a thousand tons in weight, which seem to have been effortlessly placed atop one another, using technologies or methods unexplained by these so-called experts. Is it really that unthinkable to believe that they could indeed once shift these enormous stones found in Yangshan? Not only move them, but lift them on top of one another? Fortunately, more and more people are beginning to look at this exact possibility. 
and with the mounting evidence in support of far greater antiquity surfacing every day, it is only a matter of time before these sites are truly revealed for what they actually once were. England is a place steeped in history. Ancient megalithic sites and mounds litter the countryside. Many of these places, claimed as having been created during the Neolithic period, however, the still existing enormous size of the ancient trilithons, for example, many of which still standing, predictably evade modern explanation. With many of these ancient sites, past functions, still heavily debated amongst those in the so-called no. We feel that due to the often inexplicable nature of these ancient sites, there is a strong possibility that they are in fact remnants left by a once far more capable group of individuals than our Neolithic ancestry. A group somehow capable of quarrying, moving, and lifting these enormous stones into the positions we find them today, often still displaying their intimate knowledge of solar movements. And Mays Howe is no exception. Nestled amongst the rugged landscape of Orkney, within Scotland, this so-called burial mound was once perfectly aligned with the midwinter solstice, allowing sunlight to pass down its immovable passageway only at this particular time of year. And this impressive passageway is the focus of our video. As with the many other unimaginable, unexplainable ancient sites that can be found all over Earth, the many hundreds of people who frequent them merely overlook that which has been hidden in plain sight, in favor of academic notions pertaining to the origins of such sites. These enormous, immovable megalithic blocks that were used to form the walls, floor, and indeed ceiling of the entrance to Mays Howe were clearly created with the intention of remaining in situ for untold millennia. Built with blocks as yet unexplored, and as such, of an as yet unknown weight. Yet the photographic imagery already taken clearly indicates that these megalithic blocks run into the hundreds of tons, far too huge for any of our Neolithic ancestors to have once moved or indeed built with. So a question arises, who could have built Maze Howe? Why did they build it? And perhaps most importantly, when was it built? Undoubtedly containing megalithic blocks far in excess of any within Stonehenge, and possibly the biggest yet discovered upon the British Isles, many of these claimed megalithic sites desperately need new eyes to investigate them. Yet, regardless of what academia would like you to believe, we find the evidential, thankfully immovable features of Maze Howe highly compelling.